with all due respect. <laughs>
it's an environment where the kids tend to say, I'm just going to trust the adults here. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, um, it's hard as adult, as a, as a, as a parent to look at this without bias. Everybody loves their kid. Everybody. We had a conversation uh, at school today. Um, Asher has already told me he's seven that he can't wait to play um, striker on the soccer field and quarterback on the football field. And then um, he's going to wants to play shortstop and lead off and like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So oh, yeah. you, you have a seven year old and like, he's like, can I do all that buddy? And I say, well, we'll definitely give you the opportunity to, <laughs> right? right. We'll yeah. give you the opportunity, but no, you're not going, you're not <laughs> going to, but we'll give you the opportunity. Um, Anytime there's big business like this, there's money involved. Um, there tends to be a little bit of corruption, right? Mm -hmm. In the trends that you're seeing, and you can speak on baseball, what are the trends we're seeing in youth sports? One, that you feel need immediate attention. And what are the things that you're seeing obviously that are an issue, but what are the solutions? What can we go back to? What's that look like? I don't want to have an episode here where it's like, Hey, let's bash youth coaches and parents and the industry. What kind of solutions are we looking at here? Because we know 70% of kids quit sports at 13. Uh, we know that um, there was a study done at a youth baseball tournament years ago where over 60% of the parents at the youth sports that were polled believed that their kid had the, what it took athletically and mentally to play division one baseball. Mm -hmm. So 60% of the parents thought their kid had what it took. Mm -hmm. um, and parents believe that sports is all of, is, can be about chasing the scholarship. And you've been up front and said what you believe sports should be about. I believe sports should be about what are the issues that you're seeing what can we discuss today? What solutions can we have? And just kind of start that conversation. Sure. Well, I, I could tell you to, the, to, to simplify the, the overall shift that I've seen over the years is I kind of remember, I remember being a kid and our, our dads played, you know, weekend baseball leagues, flag football leagues, softball leagues, basketball leagues, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, you know, as kids, we had our, our little league, our peewee football and all of that. But it was, it's like we both kind of had, of our, had our outlet. And so when we had our opportunity to play, it was about us. It was about our enjoyment, us having fun, learning the game, having a good time. Um, I feel like as, you know, the parents and the dads and all of that, all of that have become less active in their own piece of the game. Mm -hmm. We've kind of become the, as kids, the it's 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 like now now what we're doing is about them more than it's about us, you know them and their goals. You know, hey, you know I didn't do this when I was coming up through. If I would have worked a little harder, if I would have done this, so now you know now I'm going to make sure that you don't make the mistakes I did. And the kids don't have that same freedom to just experience the game through their own lens. Kind of, it's like. It, it gets pushed on them a lot. It's um, it, it, it becomes the, you know, as you're saying about, instead of just being about the enjoyment of the game and falling in love with the game, it's about, Hey man, if you, if you do this, you can, you, you know, you can earn a division one scholarship one day, you know, this myth of the full ride for the, the college baseball player, you know, you can, you go to school on a full ride and pay for college and, and all of that. And, and just that, that shift kind of in, uh society if you will i think is what has really started creating what we've got now it sounds you... like a classic disney channel movie yeah movie. like that yeah. is literally what i grew up watching on disney channel <laughs> it's like the senior in high school chasing the scholarship because his dad is hard on him yeah 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 it's, it's a, real it's yeah real. it's an, it's yeah. an ugly ugly episode of friday uh, friday night lights yep. yeah right yeah um what do you what do you attribute that to Man, it, you know, if 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 I knew and I could figure it out and solve it, uh, you know, we'd all be rich. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I think, 
you know, and, and you kind of brought it up a little while ago that there's, you know, anytime there's opportunity to make money, um, there's going to be people that, that come along that sees that opportunity. And, you know, what a, what a parents love more than anything in the world, their kids. Right. So mm -hmm. they, you know, there's nothing a parent wants more than to, to be proud of their kid, to see their kid achieve things. And, and I, I you know, I think that when they're not, when it's something that they're not nearly as educated in as they believe that they are, it presents that opportunity for people to feed them a bunch of baloney and, in essence, kind of separate them from their money and sometimes put their kids in situations that probably aren't the best for their long term well being. Yeah, I have a friend of mine that's a coach in the upstate, and he came to me one recently, and he's like, um, there's a guy in the upstate that's working as like a a street agent for high school kids to help them get recruited. Yeah. And we've all seen those guys, right? It's, it's, it's amazing. 25 years in this industry. It's the same guy. It's the same thing every year. I, I kind of think the next year will be better, but it's not because it's a new set of parents, a new set of kids, mm -hmm. all with the same beliefs. All this, and, and he said, the parents came to them and said, Hey, this guy's saying that, um, uh, we're not getting everything we need here to go play division one football. And mm -hmm. this is a big time powerhouse program in the upstate. Okay. Yeah. He said, we're not getting everything we need. We need to do an A, B, C, and D. And my buddy's just like, it kind of blows my mind because like the parents believe it. Yeah. Right? yeah. They believe that. And what that comes down to is um, it, it turns into, you've discussed this in baseball, they call it daddy ball. Yeah. You know, little Jimmy's not shortstop and starting pitcher. So the daddy's going to go start his new league, his new travel team. Mm -hmm. recruit some of his buddies and now the daddy's going to be the coach and jimmy's going to get his chance to play shortstop in first base because the coach or shortstop and, and pitcher and lead off because the coach doesn't like him right right listen i know there are some crappy coaches out there but for what coaches have to put up with in this industry Nobody does it because they're getting rich. They do it because they love kids. Right. And they love the game. Right. I I don't know anybody. I've had very few conversations with coaches where it starts with, I just don't like the kid. I know he can help me win. Yeah. I know he can help me win, but I just don't like the kid. Listen, here's one thing I'll tell you about dudes. We would play Satan's spawn yeah. if we knew he could win a game for us yeah <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> no right. doubt no doubt right if satan spawned through 96 mile per hour cutters from the left side of the plate randy he'd be playing on everybody's team <laughs> that's, that's right that's right. right and hey and he'd be asked to guest play on everybody's team he'd be asked to guest play and he would never pay a dime to play in a that's tournament right. that's right Yep. You know, he'd never pay a dime to play in a tournament, but boy, if he threw a 97 mile per hour cutter and he was 17 years old, he yep. he would come play on everybody. Every guy would have him on, on their guest play team, right? He'd, um, he'd play he'd play 51 weeks a year as long as Christmas fell on a weekend. So, oh yes. my God, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> right? And I would say like on my side though, like with growing up playing soccer my whole life, to relate it to back to a coach, and I don't think they're necessarily a bad coach, but if you didn't want to play college sports, they lose interest in you. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. wow. So you may you may have not made a team that you could have made or should have made because you don't want to go on and play to co in college. And I know it's not the same for every sport, but mm. with how I played soccer, if you expressed not wanting to play in college, they didn't really want to invest time in you. So maybe wanted you wanted to, wanted to produce, play Yeah. So maybe wanted you wanted to, to play at the highest level you could at 17. Yeah, compete and play the highest level and experience the highest level you could while you're there. But if you're not wanting to go play college, they'll think Let's, maybe yeah. you're, you're you're taking somebody else's spot that wants to. Hundred percent. Like I'll personally, when I got into high school, I've been playing soccer my whole life. I'm a multi sport athlete. That's how I always was. I'm very thankful for parents that encourage us to play multi sport. It, it exposed us to a lot of different things, and it always kept me very busy. And my parents knew I needed a schedule, so I was always in sports. But in high school, I expressed, you know, I'm actually going to switch sports at the high school. I'm not going to play high school soccer. I want to try lacrosse. It was a new sport. I wanted to play. It was something different. Once I did that, my program that I played soccer with 
kind of lost interest. And they just said, well, you know, there's no point in you really being here if you don't want to play for your high school and you don't want to play in college. I have no regrets not paying, playing in college. I That was never my interest. I wanted to go and live college in a very different way. I wanted to be able to study abroad and do my own thing. No regrets that way. But they did take away playing at a higher level because I didn't have interest in playing in college or anything right. after, which I think is just crazy. No, that's wrong, right? Do you think that goes back to we're chasing that ride? We're chasing that scholarship. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. I mean, they the they want to produce superstars and great athletes and top college players. I have girls that I played with at a young age that play professionally now. Like, and that's fantastic. I root them on. That's amazing. But I think it is wrong to take away or at least to lose interest in an athlete that doesn't necessarily align with that same goal of playing at a higher level. I think that comes down to we, us as a culture and new sports, everybody chases that ride. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't you say, Randy, everybody's like, oh, you want to play college someday? That comes down to, well, what's the purpose? Randy, you you put a post up about um, a coach that said a lot of kids on the team were chirping and talking trash. And the coach made them all do like a bunch of up downs because yeah. that's not how you act. That's right. not how you, and you're like, I don't care if that team goes, oh, and 10 this year that kid's learning yeah. life lessons that's right around how that's to right. how to act in in a in an environment how to be respectful how to win how to lose how to compete because i remember i sent you a text last baseball of an experience i had in a youth, in a, in a high school sporting event where I was absolutely amazed at what was being yelled at other players, what was being yelled at the ref, why you would want to umpire or referee a high school game is beyond me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey, is this just my environment or is this your environment? You immediately sent me a video of like, Oh no, this is what happened here. And it was a flat out brawl yeah. <laughs> on yeah. the field. And I'm like, and here's, here's the problem here. And everything, the number one quote I probably say too many times is habits are caught, not taught. Kids are seeing parents argue. Then they see them yell at the ref. Then they see Billy's mom yelling at Jimmy's mom. And now the kids feel like they can tr act that way. Yeah. And now it's on the field. And now it's celebrated. Now it's on social media. Mm -hmm. But now you also see it on TV, right? Have we lost perspective of the purpose of youth sports? So just kind of a little story about, you know, our how our travel stuff got going. And, um, you know, originally we started doing the, the travel thing from a high school age group thing to help guys be, you know, be seen, get a chance to play good competition. You know, if they're good enough, have an opportunity to play at the next level and I had people come to me and say, Hey, you know, we really need something in our area for the younger kids. Like, you know, not the, you know, the daddy ball, so to speak, not the, you know, we want guys, we want the kids to be able to learn how to play the right way, stay healthy, you know, get, get what they're supposed to be able to get out of the game that enjoy what age other. groups was this. So, so we decided to start doing eight to 12 year old okay. teams. Okay. Developmental okay. league, like a yes. like de developmental program. Yeah. Right. Right. Play, all played locally and, and all of that. So, you know, it's called travel ball, but not, they're not traveling all over. It's mm -hmm. played on the weekends. I go to our, to the very first tournament we had in those younger age groups and my jaw about hit the ground with, you know, I mean, like I said, I, and I'm, I'm an old, I'm old now. But I think back to when I was playing and it's just like, man, we're out there playing. There's some cheering here and there, but it's like, you know, you just, just out there playing a game and parents are watching, clap a little bit. The, the, the amount of just absolute chaos coming from the bleachers and, um, you know, basically parents, relatives, fans, whatever, anytime balls are put in play, you know, if, if they don't agree with the call, I was just, I, I, I mean, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, how in the world are these kids supposed to play the game of baseball 
when I mean, just like it's it was an absolute madhouse. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, we try to do the best we can and learn from it and educate our our people. But you're you know, you can't you're still going to end up in, in environments where it's just utter chaos. And, um, you know, times where coaches, luckily, none, none of our coaches, but, you know, coaches getting into basically brawls at home plate. I mean, like, you know, it just just stuff that it's like, how, like, what are we doing? What are we doing as adults? Like, um, and, and what, you know, what are, what are the kid? you know, what's the, then somebody's yelling at their kid, Hey, just got to relax out there. And it's like, <laughs> you get, it's like utter it's chaos. Right. Yeah. It's like utter chaos over here. And you're wanting the kid to be a cool cat out there. It's like, you know, they're going to, they're going to learn to be, you know, high, strong and chaotic. Like they're seeing outside, the, outside the fence. So basically what you're saying is we've, we've lost perspective of what's the purpose of youth sports. Absolutely. And yeah. that's hard Absolutely. work, teamwork, determination. Yeah. If you, you got to work for what you get, yeah. how to win, how to lose, all the things that sports provide kids, all the ways, all the things that they need to learn to be good adults in my yeah. opinion. 100%. I, mean, I credit so much to playing sports when I was a kid. 100%. Work ethic. Work ethic. Yeah, 100%. Sacrifice. But I do wonder, I do wonder like where the disconnect happened because like I didn't grow up in an environment like that with, with sports. We rarely played against teams where their parents were super, super involved. And we always knew ahead of time, like those parents were just the parents, you know, that team is just the team that's parents are crazy. I wonder where the disconnect happened. Like we always had a coaches meeting with our parents at the beginning of every year. Like you will not be over, you know, sure. overwhelming. And so the and standards whizzing. were set with the parents. Yeah. With the, yeah, yeah. Right off the bat, there was a standard that was set with the parents. You're not going to yeah. be that way. You're not going to do it. You have to preserve the, uh, you have to preserve the experience for the for the kid. Yeah, I mean, you like occasionally, preserve, of course, yeah. you know, there's some back and forth with referees. Like that's to be expected if the ref is doing a really terrible job. But where's the disconnect now? Is it a coach's thing? Is it a parent thing? Of why these parents are getting so over involved in youth sports? Man, sure. I don't even. I don't it, even have a. I don't even have an answer. Is it a social media know. thing where like? Now it's just easier for your kid to take off in these NIL deals. And like, now we've got a whole different situation yeah. with sports. And, you know, and it is something that I think, um, you know, again, I started doing the, the travel aspect of things in, in 2011. And, and I just look at how things have changed just in the last four or five years. Right. Um, I mean, it's, you know, not that, not that everything was a perfect world at, you know, at that time, but the last four or five years, it's like, you know, some things have gone on. Do you off think the cliff. last four or five years have been, have multiplied yes. the severity? So yeah. four or five years, the last four or five years has been worse than the previous four or five years by a multiplier? I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a night and day difference in my opinion. That's wild. Yeah. I was still uh, playing youth sports until 2014. I graduated high school in 2014. Yeah. And I, I, and again, even you're saying never, great, what you're seeing and hearing is not what you experienced. No. I had an experience. Um, I played in the little league world series as a kid where, you know, or everybody plays in it. You're in the right league. Right. And I was pitching and I threw a ball that I thought was a, a strike. And I kind of went like, hmm, okay. Um, my next ball I threw, I thought was a strike and I showed emotion on the mound of displeasure for the ref, for the ump. My dad walked out of the stands, stuck his head in the dugout, walked back up to the stands. Coach called me over and said, you're done. That's, and that's how my parents were. Like yeah. we didn't I was, I was 13. I was 13 yeah. and I acted disrespectful. And my dad's, I mean, Randy, you're a baseball guy, so I've seen you've seen the documentary about the greatest shortstop of all time to ever play, Derek Jeter. Um, you saw his documentary, right? I did, I did. I, I mean, I'm just speaking in absolutes here as the greatest shortstop of all time to ever play the game, Derek Jeter. Um, when David Wells kind of made a gesture, gestured to the outfielder when the outfielder misplayed a ball. Yeah. And Derek Jeter walked up and handed the ball to him in a smile. And said, "Hey, man, we don't do that shit around here." Yeah. 
And that's me and a few coaches I know have that saying, and I have that saying with my kid. I might, I might, I, I'm sorry. I might, I might swear. Maybe I don't, I'm not going to admit I swear to my kid. <laughs> there has been times where I watched my kid on the soccer field, throw a fit. And I pulled him over and said, Hey, Asher, we don't do that stuff around here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, I wish more people would have a conversation with their kid, but it's hard because the kid is seeing the parent do it. Yeah. And they're seeing the parent. I mean, it's, it's, it's not uncommon these days to see somebody kicked out of a, a sporting event. Yeah. Well, it would have blown just... my mind as a teenager if somebody got yeah. kicked out. I'd be like, your mom just got kicked out. Yeah, so that's, that's the talk of the town. If your mom got yeah. kicked out or your yeah. dad got kicked <laughs> out. Just like, like, eh. Are you kidding me? Yeah, eh. They just got kicked out. I know. And I'm just like, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. We, we had, had a youth uh, youth sports parent here a few weeks ago in town. They, uh, coach had to call the cops. I mean, so it's, you know, it's... Like, it's not that big, bro. It's not that big. I know. I know. Your kid's eight. I know. Yeah. It's You're not funny. that big. And even at yeah. any level, even at any level, it's not that big. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's not that big. Um, Like, it is such a developmental time of your life that should be looked on as a developmental time of your life. Like, it, at the end of the day, even at the professional level, like, it's, it's still not that big. It's like yeah. one piece of your I life. Think, I yeah. think, guys, the answer to this is if there's an there's i think the greatest answer to every problem is personal accountability and responsibility definitely right um yeah i've i've always said i love i love the person it's the people that get on my nerves right yeah. i love the individual person but when you get them in groups that that's when they bother me yeah yeah and as people who are in the industry i think it comes down to you saying all right i'm going to make sure the people around me don't do that. I'm going to be the brakes, not the gas pedal. I'm not going to act that way. I'm going to have a requirement with people around me don't act that way. I'm going to create a relationship with my kids that if they're around that, I'm going to make sure that they know it's not okay. Yeah. And hopefully it spreads that you, you, you do a little bit of what you can do with the kids that you have that know you can't act that way. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing I really want to talk about is develop developing youth athletes. Right. Um, there's a concept called long-term athletic development that basically maps out stages for kids. Um, and in the age group we're dealing with is, um, you teach them how to train and, and, and say baseball, you teach them how to play, you teach them how to compete. Then you teach them how to win. Right. Um, winning my, my kid hates to lose, like to the point that it's out of control. And I've always told everybody, I'm never going to take that from him. I want everybody around me to hate to lose. Yeah. When my kid's okay with losing, it's probably when he doesn't love it anymore, he should stop playing, right? Yeah. I hate to lose. Everybody hates to lose. How we handle losing is another thing. So I don't want this to come across and say that winning is not important because when you win, you, you, you strive to do your absolute best in everything. And when you win, you did, you, you performed at a higher level than somebody else and you won. But do you think we're stressing the importance of winning too early over the importance of development in, in baseball or youth sports? Yeah. So, you know, I'm throwing but hard you, ones at you, right? Like, no, no, I mean, no, these are no, hard no, no. Subjects, right? So I'm just trying to think of how to how to say it. So what you just mentioned with Asher, you know, that's like that's coming from him, his hatred to lose. That's not something that you're forcing upon him or trying to, you know, create in him so much. And and I think that's one of the the pieces that, like, that that sort of stuff's got to come from the kid. You know, some some guys are more competitive than others. Um, some guys, some girls, some, you know, uh, there's going to be players that love it more than others and all that sort of thing. We can't, there's too many, there's too many adults, whether it's parents, coaches or whatever that are trying to, you know, force their hatred for losing and love of winning and all of that. 
you know, they're, they're taking nine, 10, 12 year old kids and, you know, trying to project that on them. If it, you know, it's up to the kid. I yeah. mean, that's, you know, and I, from a long-term development standpoint, the thing that I um, try to get through to people, the most important piece of the entire puzzle is if the kid loves what they're doing. The if love the, of the kid, game, right? if they don't love what they're doing, there is literally nothing you can do that is probably going to um, create this, you know, division one athlete that you think you're trying to create because the first time that they get to make their own decisions, they're saying the heck with this, you know, uh, you know, when I had a college coach tell me one time, he's, you know, cause w when recruiting kind of started getting into these eighth and not eight, and nine, eighth and ninth grade kids, he said to me, man, I'm not offering a kid until he gets his driver's license and he has his first girlfriend. He goes, because <laughs> until he has his driver's license and his first serious girlfriend, I don't even know if he loves to play the game. And I thought, man, that's, that's pretty good. I said, I never that really thought about it that way, but I said, that makes a lot of sense. Well, he um, understands that a woman has killed many a career <laughs> is what he understands. Right. It's undefeated. No, no, yeah. no comment. No, comment. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, no, but, but no, but like, I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. Would the kid drive himself to those tournaments if he had the choice? Right. 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 Um, you know, when my kid plays a game and they lose, he sits in the middle of the field taking his cleats off like he just lost the World Cup on penalty shots. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And and I have to be like, buddy, go get your snack. All his buddies just sprint to the snack station. Yeah. And I was told one time by a friend of mine, Jeremy Boone, who works in sports culture, he said, hey, man, the first thing you say to your kid after a game is going to be the what he considers to be the most important part of the, what you just experienced with him. And I said, he goes, if the first thing you go up to your kid and be like, oh, man, sorry, you didn't win. He's going to think that winning is the most important thing. Yeah. And I tell parents what you talk about in the car, you're telling your son that's the most important thing. So every time I see any kid, even a kid I coach, my first comment is, I love coming to watch you play. I love to watch you play. I love coming to see you play. I love watching you have fun. Yeah. Right. And you're right. The kids that love it the most. We had a basketball player one time who played football and they had basketball workouts during football season on Sunday where they could do open gym. And we're going into the playoffs. And the biggest concern is like, man, if this kid rolls an ankle going into football playoffs, playing basketball, I'm like we're down a guy. Right. So we were talking about like, Hey, not doing that during football season. Kid came into my office and goes, Hey coach, I know we're not supposed to do it, but like, I just love getting with my buddies and hooping on Sundays, man. And yeah. I went, go do it, bro. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah. Like, I got, I got, you gave me the best answer I could, you could ever give me is I just love getting my buddies together and hooping on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not going to take that from you. Right. Um, the two, one, two, two college athletes that I've worked with in the last five years, I can tell you their love for the game of what they did was insatiable to the point that other people said they were obsessed. Yeah. They're, drilling the soccer ball around the field at six o'clock in the morning. Not because they had to, because they chose to. Yeah. They're in the cage every day. Not because they have to, because they love to, right? Insatiable desire to the point that one of the kids that played for us, and, and Randy, you know him, got drafted by the Blue Jays. After his first year, the Blue Jays came to him and said, hey, we're going to ask you, that for six weeks, you don't go to the cage or throw a baseball. Like it was like between like November 1st to December 15th or something. And he came to me and he's really confused. He ended up going to that, to the organization and saying, Hey, I don't think you guys understand. I'm trying to be the best. Like I'm not going to be the best taking six, like, you don't, you guys don't get it. Right? right. And it was a mental fight for him. What he didn't realize is come March, he's playing 120 games, bro. Like right. you know what I'm saying, 
So you're sure. right. The kids that love it put the time and effort into it and they love it. And the development side of that is we stress so much winning that kids get, and that's part of burnout why kids quit by 13. They overcompete. There's so much stress on winning. It becomes a job. They never have fun. Do you have a girlfriend? Like I've had plenty of kids where I'm like, do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I just so much time doing this and this. It's just, uh, you need to have a girlfriend in high school, bro. It's okay. Right. Or, you know, like it's, 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 sure. you know, and, you know, like I said, I really don't know the answer to that. I do think we overcompete. Long-term athletic development models say we overcompete in tournaments. There's too many tournaments. AAU basketball playing four games in a weekend. AAU, you know, travel baseball playing three games in a weekend. Soccer playing four. That hurts the development. You're not being developed, right? Do you think, sorry to interrupt, do you think no. there's more pressure on the individual versus the team now? Because I remember like from my past, there was so much pressure on the team as one unit. Like, yes, you want to perform well as an individual, but it's all about supporting your team as Without one whole entire unit. Without a doubt. Because if you go to a AAU basketball tournament and you see the guys that join the team, they practice two times, they go to a tournament, they're not going there for the team. Yeah. They're going there to put up 20 and 15 to get the college scout to call them. Yeah. Right. It's not about the team. Right. And do you, you think that's rooted from like their previous development or like their parents in like pushing them to be a superstar as an individual? I think it comes from the parents. I think it comes from the desire to get that college scholarship. Yeah. You know, 4% of kids go on to play sports after high school at any level. That's not just right. division one, 4%. Yeah. Of that, of that one out of every four quit after their freshman year. Yeah. Why do they quit? Because it's really hard. Yeah, and they might not be the best. And you better love if they it. were in high school. Yeah. Oh, that happens all they, the time. They it happens all the time. They're like, uh, you're 13. Yeah. The freshman. Everybody yeah. was good. Yeah. And they don't like that. So they quit. Right. Because right. the, the time commitment's so much different than what they it's like you try to tell them going in, and then they get there, they're like, Man, I didn't I didn't know it was gonna take up this much time. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like tell, telling you that for you know, for how many years and they, it's like, well, man, there's, there's you know, my, my friends are doing this on the weekends, going to the beach or going yeah. here, going there. And not know, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Not I. yeah, yeah. Not I, had a, I had a kid that was getting recruited, went on a, a college trip and there was a kid that had a preferred walk on that was at on the trip with them. And the preferred walk on goes, Hey buddy, are you going to rush when you get here? <laughs> Because we know about it, it makes us laugh, right? Yeah. And um, he's like, no, I'm coming here to play football. He's like, oh, well, I'm coming as a preferred walk-in, but I'm going to rush. I said, I said, hey, man, that kid won't be there in December. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, not a chance. Exactly. Not a the, chance. And I mean, it, it's true. I mean, even in high school with my lacrosse program, and this is, I love my lacrosse coaches. They're two of the best coaches I've ever had, but we had two a days, five days a week. Like I was at the school at five 45, we practiced till seven 45. And then we started practice again at two 30 PM. And I was there till five 36, maybe seven o'clock. Like mm -hmm. that is four to seven hours of lacrosse Yeah, in one day. Yeah. I do think it come down to the individual of uh, people want to be individualized in their sport and, and forget about the team. Yeah. Uh, the number of, of, of times I've experienced a coach be like, Oh yeah, so and so is not going to play this weekend because um, they're going on a trip with so and so. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, wait, I, I'm what? What do you say? Uh, I'm I'm confused. Like, wait, aren't they on your team? Yeah, but so and so and so and so are going to the beach for the weekend. They planned it like two months ago. Well, they know it's in the middle of the. Well, I'm confused. Like, I don't ever want to yeah. be, I don't ever want to not be confused by that. Yeah. I don't ever want to understand that. Yeah. Right. Um, learning how to work with a team is the number one thing I think that happens in youth sports. Right. Yeah. Learning how to be a teammate, how to, how to provide right. a value to a team. You have a football team that's got 45 kids on it. 22 of those kids will start. Mm -hmm. How can he provide value to that team and not be a starter? Right. right. But mm -hmm. you have people that say things like, 
well, I don't want Jimmy. Jimmy shouldn't have to come to all the workouts because it's not like he's going to play a lot. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He decided you're to part be a of, a part team. of the team. Yeah. yeah. You're part of something greater than who you are. Right. Yeah. That should be the most important thing. Right. Yeah. Just being a part of the team. That is also part of the coach's responsibility to explain that to everybody. Yeah. Right? Well, and that's right. why I was kind of asking too earlier about, you know, is it a, a coach's responsibility to be not necessarily in charge of a parent's action, but to lay down ground wall, like ground rules, you know, like mm-hmm. you're not going to act like that when you're in my stands. Yeah. I, I don't that's know if hard that's been to, lost too. That's hard to, 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 to stick to that culture because no matter how you want to shake it in a majority of people's programs, the talented athletes are not treated the same. Yeah. Right. They're not, they're not right. treated yeah. the same, you know, um, your kid, that's an all American. That's your first base and hits bombs. And he's two minutes late for practice. It does every coach in America treat that kid different than the kid that doesn't play at all when he's two minutes I- late. Oh, I will right. say uh, my coaches would treat us all the same. Good. Then you grew I, up I was, in a great culture. I, yeah. I'm Good telling you. you, I told you my two lacrosse yeah. coaches were the best ever. I was an All-American. I won awards, but if I were two minutes later, I missed practice. I'm running the whole time. Yeah. doesn't matter. Good for you. You grew up in a great culture that understood. <laughs> I did. It was, yeah, it was treating I you did. something greater. I want to I wanna finish with a subject that we talk about a lot, Randy, and this is probably something we're going to get a lot of clips from. Concept of sports specialization. Sure. Okay. It's a big thing in sports, right? Um, I hear people all the say, there's no way to play college sports if you don't specialize. Well, there's two things wrong there. One, if your main focus is college sports, right? you're missing it. That's your first problem, yeah. Yeah, the second problem is um, there. there's a way to play. Kids that play college sports, that play multiple sports, are super talented, right? Um, I do believe that I can identify a division one athlete by the time they're ninth grade. When a kid rolls through their ninth grade season of sports, I can usually pick out the talent. Mm -hmm. God given gift, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They look like the rest of the guys. When they walk out there, people go, Oh, that guy's different. He stands out. She stands out. She's bigger, stronger, faster. Things are easy for them. They can achieve more on the sports field without working as hard as everybody else. Right. Yeah. The great, one of the, I think the, the greatest quote I, I tell people that's overused is um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work unless you've seen stupid talent. Right. Right. (laughs) When you've seen stupid talent, it does not matter. It does not matter. That guy's going to hit the ball over the fence. He's going to throw a 97 mile per hour cutter. He's going to catch the ball and score a touchdown. Um, he's going to dunk on everybody in a game. Stupid talent, hard work does not matter. Yeah, it's the guy that grabs the bar for the first time and benches three fifteen. He's like, is that a lot? You know, sports specialization. I think my take on this will surprise a lot of people. I don't believe that it is an absolute that you have to play all the sports all the time all the way through your whole career. Um. I do believe in the developmental stage from 11 to 15, you need to be exposed to multiple sports from an athleticism side to an injury prevention side. I do believe that if a kid is identified as a big time next level prospect at 16 or 17 years old, it's okay to, I don't think a kid who only plays basketball or baseball or whatever, I'm most of the only example I'm thinking of right now is a kid that played baseball that decided I'm going to go, I'm going to only play baseball from here on out was 17 years old. He had been identified as a draft pick. He had played multiple sports growing up and there's millions of dollars on the line for that kid to specialize. doesn't bother me. Right. Sure. But for a majority of kids, they're not that person. The number one thing I think about telling kids to special sports specialize is it takes away the, you only have a, a few years to hang out with your buddies and play sports. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. You don't want to miss that in high school. If you're going to play college sports, that's going to be determined way before 
right? Way before, right? Yeah. But we're dealing with the economics of it. Soccer coach is going to tell you, you got to play the season. Then you got to play the summer travel. And then you yeah. got to play the off season to go to all the showcases. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't do it. Play the next level unless you do all that. Right. That's a lie. That's a lie. Right. Right. What's your take on sports bill is specialization? How has it changed in recent years? Where do you see it? Okay. Where do you see it as bad? Give me your rap on it. Sure. Sure. So the first thing that I tell everybody is, you know, play whatever you want to play. Like, don't, do not get caught up in the, you have to, you know, go this route. You have to go that route. It's an absolute, you know, there's no option. It's the only way to do it. Don't get caught up in that. If you want to play three different sports, play three different sports. Um, now I do think on the flip side of that, there are times where, you know, I think athletes are forced into playing some sports that they hate every second that they're out there and do not want to do it. And it's not good for anybody, not good for mm -hmm. that kid, mm -hmm. not good for, you know, his teammates and coaches, um, you know, play what you want to play. You know, me personally, I wanted to play stinking everything growing up. I mean, uh, basketball, football, baseball, I played golf. I was in bowling leagues, you know, being in Western <laughs> New York in the winter and you got to figure, I mean, I, I wanted, I just wanted anything that I could compete in. I wanted, mm -hmm. I wanted to do that, you know, cause mm -hmm. it was fun. It mm -hmm. was fun. And I, and I, and I do think if, you know, we got to put fun first when they're young. And so if they enjoy doing a bunch of different things and by all means, by all means do it. Um, you know, you talked about the kind of, the, kind of those outliers that, it, it almost, I don't want to say it doesn't matter what they do, but it almost doesn't matter what they do, you know, but that's not the majority of, no, it's that's not. not the majority of people. No, it's not. Um, you know, uh, and just like there's those outliers from a, from a, um, you know, they're just so uber talented that things are going to somehow work out to a certain degree just by showing up, you know, you're going to have a small percentage of, you know, of athletes that unfortunately it doesn't matter what, the, how hard they work they just don't have it. The majority of people are right there, are, are right there in the middle. You know, you got your 80 percenters right there in the middle that, you know, to me, the goal, the, the focus should be having fun, learning the life lessons, you know, developing successful habits that are going to benefit you throughout, throughout life, regardless of what you do. It doesn't matter if it becomes, you know, a job as a as a teacher or a policeman or a doctor or whatever develops but uh those habits through sports well you know different sports have some different qualities that you know you can benefit from benefit from i mean yeah i i know if i if i had specialized in and i can't tell you i mean if i would have had that opportunity i can't tell you that i that i wouldn't have specialized coming up it, 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 there was no option I mean, you're, you know, you, there wasn't baseball all year round. There wasn't spring football. There wasn't, it was just each, each sport had its season and I wanted something I could compete in. So right. I, I played it all, but, um, you know, I, I do think the key is, you know, play what you want to play, but man, don't, I think it's also a, a, a slippery slope if we're, forcing guys to play something that they just hundred yeah 100 yeah i was i've been put in situations where people would be like can you talk to my kid and, and try to get him to uh, we want him to play multiple sports but can, we, can you talk him into playing basketball and i'll go and be like hey man you want to play basketball he'd be like no i said he said you don't want to do it yeah, <laughs> yeah. but i yeah. i totally agree with he you too on, play. Yeah. on uh learning like different lessons from playing multiple sports. Josh knows I always tell my clients to be multidimensional when it comes to their training. A hundred percent agree when it comes to any thing with sports, be multidimensional, be able to yeah. do a lot of different things. I know basketball taught me a lot about soccer. Soccer taught me a lot about lacrosse. Mm -hmm. Lacrosse mm -hmm. taught me a lot about basketball. Like it turns back in a circle of where I can advance in different ways because of the different sports that I played and, and the different lessons that you learn inside of those sports. Here's one thing that I hear people and I've heard that I've heard that she goes, Hey, we go to a really big school. He's good at baseball, but he's not good at basketball and he's not good at football. 
um, if he was on those teams, he'd just be sitting on the bench. I think there's value to that statement, right? He would never yeah. play, or he doesn't. He, he, he would never. There, there's no opportunity for him to participate. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, I understand that. Doesn't mean that you participate every season as a baseball player, right? Right. It means you take time off. You go develop parts of your game. You spend that time in the weight room, right? Yeah. You can combat just because you don't play other sports doesn't mean you have to play baseball in spring season, summer ball, and then fall ball. Yeah, there has to be a, a strategy that makes sense. I mean, there has to be a strategy from a developmental standpoint yeah. to prevent injury. Yep. Um, do go play church league pickup. Yeah, yeah, right? that's what I did. Church league yeah. basketball. It was yeah. like my yeah. favorite thing. Yeah, <laughs> go do go do something else. Yeah, that's hard. It's hard too because um, when you really love it, yeah, you want to play it all the time. There's got to oh, be an appropriate strategy. That's the yeah. other side of it. You know, multiple sports doesn't have to be. You know, oh, he made his school team in in all three sports. It could be church league basketball. It yeah. could be, you know, a summer baseball team. If you know, what whatever it is. I mean, you know, you can you can still find that activity outside of you know. All right, he got cut from his high school basketball team. So you know, or whatever it is. You know, well, okay, well, go left. There's fair. other. Yeah, there's yeah. Some, I mean, there's yeah. there's different ways to go about it. That doesn't yeah. give you a it doesn't give you a pass to all of a sudden, you know, do stupid things from a baseball standpoint and play in you know, three hundred and seven games over the course of the season. Like it's, yeah. you know, isn't it funny from a baseball's perspective? We have never been more educated on the baseball arm from an injury perspective, like a Tommy John's. Mm -hmm. We've never been more educated on injury prevention, yet kids' injury prevention injuries are still rising. Yeah. ACL, female, girl, ACLs, we've never been more educated on preventing, on prevention ever. We've never been more educated this moment in time than we've ever had on how to prevent ACL injuries in female athletes. But injuries for the ACL females are still on the rise. Isn't yeah. that interesting? How, do you We've do you been... do you think that that's got anything to do with the adv advancements that we've had in in training that has, that has allowed us to um, just push our our body to the limits? That um, I I'll, I'll use it in terms of uh, you know baseball pitchers. I mean, you know, I was I had this conversation with a guy the other day, and he was talking about you know, reading a book on the arm and all of this. And where there's that book you know, called the arm, right? The arm. That's so that's the book. So that's the book. And, yeah. you know, and the thing I was kind of telling him is it's like, you know, I, I think there are so we, we always want to pinpoint one, one thing that's contributing to the epidemic. And mm -hmm. I think it's so many different things, mm -hmm. but you know, when there's so many guys throwing 98 miles an hour and all of this nowadays i mean the body can only take so much yeah i mean i think it is yeah. being pushed to such a limit that regard regardless if you're throwing all year round or if you're on a fantastic program you know you you get your rest you you know you do everything you can you know everything you can do right with what we know now i mean man you go out there and you're throwing a ball 100 miles an hour like you're gonna break down at some point. Yeah. A car oh, yeah. going a car going 100 miles per hour into the wall is gonna is gonna do a lot more damage than the car going 30 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, do you think it's lack of rest time, or do you? Think I think it's, it's I think, lack I, of weight training. I think it's a con That's a tough one, yeah. man. Yeah. Are are our capable? Are are our bodies more capable? Yeah. We had a kid come through my high school that was the number one defensive end in the high school in the country. I met him for the first time and I've never seen a human being like that at 17 years old. I've never seen, I was absolutely in shock to see a six, six, 260 pound, 16, 17 year old kid. It blew. I was like, I've never seen anything like this in, in, in my life. What is this thing? Who is this person? Do I think maybe the advancements, I think that's a smaller piece as it is related to overtraining. Um, and sedentary lifestyles the kids have and i think like even, nutrition but, habits too yeah but sedentary, I, and and i think it has to do more that a lot of kids are playing sports that because of the number of leagues out there 
again there's research on this like like you could look, yeah, yeah, watch yeah. this and be like oh that's not it i'm giving you off my yeah. what my what my eyes are seeing um unathletic kids get hurt so i and i and i think you know i i think depending on what types of injuries obviously we're talking about for sure mm-hmm. you know but you know from just using like tommy john since that's the the the, yeah. the one that always gets thrown around you know it's not the it's not the lazy kids that are that are getting hurt. It's not the ones that are, it's the ones that are like, I mean, they, they're, they're, they're pushing the limits of yeah, what where's the connection to what their body can though, right? do. There, right, 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 right. Over training there. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. sure. There, there's a connection to overuse there. Right. I have a friend of mine that's a strength conditioning coach and he's got a 14 year old, 15 year old kid right now um, who had UCL problems. They don't PRP injections and he's starting to form bony growth around his UCL the bone the body starts laying down bone due to stress yeah when you're 14 and 15 years old and you're getting bone laid down over your ucl sure you need to pump the brakes bro yeah and actually it's probably probably too late at that point yeah right somebody abused you at 12 13 sure right well and and not to take it to a you know a professional baseball standpoint but unfortunately that's how a lot of people are looking at stuff with their 12 year old kids when they're making the decisions they're making Mm -hmm. but i think and you know when it's a it's an uncomfortable conversation uh, to have, but um, you know, you, you take a guy that is going to make sure he's getting all his rest. He's not going to push the limits. He's going to be an, you know, 88 to 90 mile an hour pitcher that is healthy and never has to worry about Tommy John and and all of that. And that guy's going to, you know, have, you know, whatever amount of success or whatever opportunity he's going to have, then you got a guy that it's like, man, I'm going to, you know, and I'm, again, we're jumping to the, yeah, the, the, the high level guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if I can say to this guy, Hey man, listen, we're, we're going to play with a little bit of fire here, but we're going to push your limits and man, you're going to throw 98 and be nasty as this, but just, just know that between the years of 18 and 38, you're probably going to give up four years of your baseball career because you're going to be hurt, but you're going to be, that elite level arm and you're going to get drafted like, for three million they're, they're like right. i'll sign up for that I'll, yeah it's yeah. like i'll i'll go through i'll i'll have two tommy johns i'll have like they'll they'll consciously make that decision i mean yeah. it's no i get you it know, and that's and that's a piece of it too but that's no, that's, that's a piece yeah. down the line you know that is down the line that is down the line i yeah man all those injuries are so multi-dimensional people always yeah. want to say you know um you know it, it's hard for me to do what i do um, when a girl I work with tears her ACL and it's non-contact, it's hard not to go, ah, what could I have done better? Sure. Sure. But then there's a part of you that goes, Hey man, we're playing sports. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Accident things are going to happen. Yeah. Right? yeah. What can yeah. you prevent? And at what point can you really prevent? Um, you can't really prevent, you can minimize risk. Sure. Um, Injuries are going to happen with sports. It's inherent. But what we do know is injuries, sports are on the rise. They say a lot of it is specialization, overtraining, um, the stress on kids. Um, I do think one of the components is when little daughter is 14, she's never been athletic. She wants to play basketball. She's never got off the couch. She sat on her phone. She's never played in the backyard. She's never done anything. She's inactive. She's not strong. She goes out there and tries to make a cut on the basketball court and her ACL goes. I think there is a level of nutrition and activities and things you do, right? So, um, man, this has been a big conversation. Um, We shoot out clips of this, get this out. Randy, I appreciate you being on. I hope we can do this oh. more often. I hope we yeah, can yeah. more often. Definitely. It's great insight. Um, I, I, I want to make sure that the conversation we had wasn't a conversation of bashing a parent or the coach or the culture. It's where can we identify concerns? Where can we identify trends? What can we do as people to educate others to say, hey, here's where the trends are headed. Here's what we can do to, to make, make it better better here's what we can do to improve the experience for our kids because i don't think anybody can be put in a room whether it's a coach a parent a player and say hey are you interested in the best outcomes for your kid 
everybody's going to say yes. Yes, I'm interested in the best outcomes for my kid. I want right. the best experience my kid can have playing sports. I think when you get to the ground of it and you really have an honest conversation, even if it's that overbearing dad that thinks that his kid is going to play on the national team when he's 17 and play in Europe when he's 18, right? Ultimately, everybody wants what's best for their kids. Right. Nobody's going to say, hey, I want my kid to be great, even if it ruins his life. Right. Right. Nobody wants to do that. Right. right. Who was the old quarterback for Southern Cal back when we were kids that played for the Todd Raiders? Marinovich. Todd Marinovich ended up yep. traveling with the dead on heroin. Yep. Right. <laughs> yep. Um, those are outliers again. Yeah. Right. But um, we want to have more conversations on this podcast that have come up with solutions, identify the problems. What can we do to make it better? What can all of us do with our media outlet we have to make it better in every day? So um, I appreciate you coming on. And um, since I'm new, I'm going to keep figuring out how to stop recording. <laughs> <laughs>